Howdy and welcome back to the shop. Well, today is Good Friday when we're recording this, so Easter greetings to everybody. Uh, spring is in the air, so we're going to work on springs. So, this is a 2000 Blazer frame on a 93 two-wheel drive pickup truck. The locating pin for the spring, where your axle locates on the spring pocket back here, is one inch further back from the eyelet on a pickup truck versus a blazer, or as far as I can compute that. That makes my drive shaft to be an inch too long, which is no big deal really. But the important part was my tires were an inch too far forward to fit the wheel arch. So we're gonna kill two stones with one bird and we're going to move the axle back just a little bit. Actually, we're going to get three birds stoned at once. We're going to move the axle back so that we've corrected that. Uh, we're also going to correct the, the drive shaft length so we don't have to have the drive shaft cut down. But more importantly for this video, we're going to do an old timer trick here. Now, on a, a leaf spring suspension, this takes some imagination, but everybody knows about spring wrap-up. So you romp your foot to the floor. It picks up the front of the pinion because you're, you're applying force this way. You have an equal and opposite reaction this way. So your torque is wanting to fold the spring up. That's one thing. Everybody knows that. Everybody understands that, that the torque is wanting to fold the spring up. But what a lot of people don't think about is all of your thrust, you know, your trans, you know, this rig's 180 horsepower, which ain't a whole lot. They are American horses, not Chinese, Chinese horses. The important part is, is all of your forward thrust is pushing through this two and a half inch wide piece of steel, through this one bolt on either side. That is transferring all of the torque or all of the thrust into the 3,000 pound truck. So what happens is this actually will have an S-bend in it on hard, hard launches, which is probably not going to be relevant on this rig because we're not going to drag this. This is not a 600 horsepower drag car. What is important though to me is at some point we will be ripping and tearing and getting this sucker stuck. I don't want a bunch of spring wrap up happening and different weirdness happening and then snap a spring off right here because that's where she'll break is right in here now these springs are wore out we will sh i'll show you that here in a minute they are slap wore out they should probably be thrown away but i ain't going to because they're too daggum cheap so what we're going to do is we're going to modify this spring and we're going to make her look like this spring. So we're going to add a whole leaf. Am I in frame? Mm -hmm. We're going to add a whole leaf underneath of here, and the end of that leaf is going to end just forward of that bolt. And then we're going to take a spring clamp, and we're going to clamp that on the third spring and the fourth spring so that this spring, spring pack is so securely clamped and what that's going to do that's going to make sort of a oh hillbilly proven ground uh, traction bar so we're going to eliminate spring wrap up and we're also going to eliminate the s bend here because this is going to make this move as one unit or pretty close to one unit now after we get this done it's going to ride like a log wagon uh, it is going to ride rough, but we don't care. That's that's not not anything we care about on this rig. Okay, pause it, bub. All right, so the the spring bolts on these are going to be stuck. I had the front ones loose already. These rear ones into the shackles uh, are going to be bad. Now, when you're taking this stuff apart, you know you've got threads sticking out here. Run your die down the threads and peel the rust, as much of the rust and the crud, 
out of those as you can get before you ever even get started. And don't even bother to hit them with hammer. You're just going to make yourself mad and screw up the bolt. So this is an Evertough ball joint press. This came from Slow Rileys. Part number is 67045. I can't remember if that's 50 or 100 bucks. It wasn't a whole lot. So that's what she looks like. So you got a hollow end on one end and a C-clamp. So you put this on here and you run her down. Awesome. Rolling. So here's the factory, I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, pin. Pin, pusher, piston, anvil. Yeah, it's probably an anvil. And that just fits down in there. There's an O-ring to help retain it down inside of there. So what I've done is I made this, and that's just kind of an approximation of the geometry on that. And this is just enough undersized that it'll push that bolt out. That's coming easy. All right. You get the idea on this, we're gonna take the front bolt out off camera. So we've got her set up here in the uh, vise. Now we're gonna heat these wicker bills up here and we're gonna spread them back out so that we can get, the, get everything apart. Now the plastic pieces are gonna catch on fire. We don't care because we're gonna throw them out anyway. So here we go. So we're going to take the center bolt out here, maybe, probably not. Will we need fire? No. Nope. Oh my goodness. Pause it. Well, that was easy. And now she's spinning through. I think that's 12 millimeter. Maybe. Well, poop. Well, it's 13 millimeter, but it's rounded off. There's not a whole lot of meat there.
There she's coming. Oh, sounds good. Yeah. Well, want me to get some oil? No, there's some of my drum drill press. All right, so we got, the, got our net off. Now, you're not really supposed to reuse these bolts, but we're going to anyway. So we're going to take that off. Put that down there so we can throw that away. Take that off. Put it down so we trip over it. Throw that away. Take that off. Put it down so we trip over it. And throw that spacer away. Now, I don't know how well this is going to come across on camera. But here's where the the old spring was rubbing. And there is oh probably about a 64th, maybe a little less than a 64th of wear where that old spring has been rubbing right there for 300,000 miles of dirt roads. So honestly these springs should be thrown away, but we're going to play with them anyway. Okay, since we need to move our, move our hole back one inch, I'm going to use my tri-square that's conveniently one inch thick. And these springs are about two and a half inches wide, so we'll go about an inch and a quarter, a little hair shorter than that. Mark from each side, and there's our center point. Now, spring steel is harder than woodpecker lips that haven't been tempered back. So we're going to don our safety glasses. I need to find mine. Now, take that back. I'm going to don my old man glasses because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. And that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is why you wear genuine American-made Red Wing work shoes and safety glasses. Okay, so we're going to use an Irwin 1332ths focus, 1332ths titanium drill bit. So, and that's about 10 and 3 eighths millimeters. So what we're going to do here, this drill is, is an antique old drill, and I've got it running somewhere between 30 and 45 RPM. I haven't actually counted the RPM. It goes so slow you can count the RPM on the drill. So we've got a, kind of a scratch on it for a center. It's, it doesn't really make a center mark on this hard stuff. But we've got us a center there, as good as we can get her. And... Uh, we're going to run real slow with real good even feed pressure. And we're going to really be careful when it comes out the other side because it's going to try to bind up when it comes out and explode that drill bit. So, Elijah's got safety glasses on. Where's my safety glasses? Uh. Over here where I don't need them. So, we're going to use plenty of OD cutting oil and we're going to... Use really good pressure. And once this drill bit starts squeaking, we're going to let up on it a little bit.
Okay, this is another second spring that I had that came off of an old blazer. I don't remember what year or what, but this was laying in a junk pile. So we've got to take this clamp, shackle, no, not shackle, this squeezy thing off of this spring because we're going to use this. Well, you'll see here in a minute, but we've got to take this off and get it out of our way. So this is not rocket surgery you just grind the rivet off and cuss at it for a while and eventually it'll either come out or you can grind both sides of it and just leave it in there but those rivets are they're a booger bear so i've got her clamped together here lined up and uh i'm just going to mark this hole for location and we're going to drill this hole for our pin in the second spring and now one of the things that i've come across building stuff out of used springs like this and i've done this a time or two is these springs will be bent and it's it's unimaginable that you can bend a spring this way but they will be bent it's just one of those things. If you come across that, don't get upset or freaked out because it's just one of those things that happen. Don't know how. Maybe it's what causes the, the S10 lean. But So I'm going to drill this hole off camera, and we'll be back. Okay, this is kind of more of the same, but now we're going to put a countersink in one of the original holes here. This was for the little rubber, or not rubber, plastic slipper pad. And you might notice that I have written all over this not to drill the wrong side because that can happen. And I'm using just a regular old plain Jane standard countersink. But we're just gonna go with moderate pressure and very slow RPM. So I'm gonna do that off camera. So we've got our countersink in our spring and off camera I've made a little rivet. That's just plain old cold, cold rolled steel. Uh, just turn that out on the lathe. You know, if you don't have a little lathe in a milling machine, I don't know sell the baby's milk or milk money or something and go buy one but boy that's just awful handy to have a little lathe in the shop even a cheapie so that fits up here in this countersink such as that that sits over the top of that we're going to heat that up red and then we're going to peen it over and then once we get this side peened over we'll flip it and we'll heat that up a little bit more and we'll peen down in here and then maybe flip it again a time or two. I'll get set up here and fire the camera back up.
Good enough for the girls we know. So there we go. She's all riveted together. Okay, so there they are all laid out in order and marked. So you will notice that our one to third spring there is too long. And honestly, that should be cut back to about there. And then that spring should be cut back to about there. So that you go boing, 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 boing. I'm not going to do that. It looks a little goofy. You know, there it is in the stack up. I'm just, I'm not that worried about it. Now, somebody is going to say, oh, you dumb dumb, having that hole right there and right there, that's going to make a weak spot in your spring and she'll break right there. Yeah, probably. It might. Don't care. It is what it is. We're building this out of what we had. And we're, if these last 50,000 miles before I break them, oh well. Okay, so now it's time to fold these up tight. So back to the fire stick.
Oh, there we go. That came out pretty good. Now, I put the clamps on here to take up all of the slack in the spring. Well, most of the slack in the spring. You want these clamped down pretty tight when you fold them over. And that, that just keeps, we don't want to get a whole lot of travel when we get on her. We don't want a whole lot of travel before the springs all compress together. So that's why I did it like that. And it just keeps things from bouncing so much. So I'm going to let this cool down a little bit and then stick her in a bucket of water. Now, you don't want to get things just absolutely screaming hot. That's probably about 300 degrees. I wouldn't want her no hotter than that. Uh, I don't know if these springs are tempered, but you really don't want to, if they are tempered, you don't want to take the temper out of them. I've heard it both ways that springs are not tempered. I've heard that they are tempered. I don't know. Another thing, the old timers were, uh, I put that bolt in backward. Huh. I just now noticed that the threads on the bolt supposed to be on the other side. I'll have to turn that over. But the, some of the old timers would put just a huge layer of grease in between the springs. Uh, and it was like a real thick, fibrous, gooey, it was gross grease. But they'd put that in between the springs because they wouldn't wear and they wouldn't squeak if they had grease in between them. Well, then the old timers, I've also had old timers told me that you never put any kind of grease in between springs because if you put it greased in there, that gets full of dust and it makes grinding paste and it wears the springs out faster. I don't know. Uh, I didn't put no grease in there because I didn't want to smell grease burning when I bent those over. So there we go. We've got them built. We've got that one built. I think I'm going to cut this video off here and uh, get these things cooled, cooled down and probably go have some dinner. It's about dinner time. Then I think we're going to plant taters. I don't know. Anyway, y'all have a good Resurrection Sunday, or I hope you have a good Resurrection Sunday, because this video is going to come out in a couple or three weeks. Like I said, it is Good Friday today. Uh, anyway, till we meet again, y'all drive safe, watch for deer. Oh, give us a big fat thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it for you. Mm-hmm.